Доброго дня, друзі. Наш традиційний брифінг. Good evening, friends. Our traditional briefing on exposing the fakes of Russian propaganda. The crisis of the genre of the Russian Goebbels has become very notable. A repeating of thesis that have already been repeatedly debunked by everyone, both international experts and Ukrainian, and even by the Russians themselves. So they are throwing in a fake again about biological laboratories and the development of chemical weapons by Ukraine. Moreover, now it will be the Americans themselves who are doing this. American experts take a closer look at the confirmed facts about the work of biological laboratories in Ukraine. Where did this information come from? Who is the source of this sensation? Quote, Take a closer look at the facts. The source of the sensation is the Russian embassy in America, a telegram channel. Well, of course, it's not surprising that they are making fakes themselves and then feeding them with resources available for them. They didn't do it on Twitter, because Twitter would have deleted the fake immediately, but they did it in the telegram channel available for them. Therefore, we repeat once again, Ukraine has not developed any biological or chemical weapons. Moreover, there was no intention to use it against the Slavic ethnos, as, Russians prop as Russian propagandists were spreading this thesis in the first months of the war. Ukraine has nothing to do with these processes in general. All this is a fiction story from A to Z, which was refuted even by Russian chemists and biologists themselves. Meanwhile, American media outlets are exposing Russian fakes, confirming their involvement in the massacre in Butcher. Remember when the facts became known immediately after the liberation of Butcher, the Russians said, we didn't kill anyone, it was all the Ukrainians' doings. Afterwards, there was a disproval of this report from both the International Human Rights Organization, Human Rights Watch and the New York Times, which proved with the help of satellite images that it was during the Russians' presence in Bucha that the massacre took place. Now CNN publishes video of Bucha, not from a satellite but from a drone, which was captured when the town was under control of the Russian military. The footage shows exactly Russian military equipment together with the bodies of civilians in our Ukrainian town, exactly on the places where these bodies were found by Ukrainian military after the liberation of Bucha. The Kremlin says they know nothing about the atrocities that took place in Bucha, their troops were no longer there, but this video directly refutes that statement. CNN reports once again, we urge you not to trust either the Russian armed forces or the propagandists, they just lie, calling white black. Meanwhile, Russian state-run TV channels are scrolling through thesis they have already scrolled through on internet resources and telegram channels. It is about a supposedly secret plan of Poland to annex part of Ukraine. In this way, they are trying to show that our western neighbor, not Russia, has plans for aggression. So with that, they try to justify their behavior in the media field. Thus, a story appeared on Russian state television with the message Russia's foreign intelligence service has declassified Warsaw's plan for Ukraine. The country has plans for some Ukrainian lands, according to intelligence data. Of course, they invented this fake themselves and legalized it themselves through the alleged internal intelligence service. And the head of this intelligence, Mr. Narishkin, shoved off himself during a meeting of the Russian Security Council when he exposed Russia's own plans for Donbass. He said he supported Putin's plans to annex Donetsk and Luhansk regions to Russia. At that time, the official version of the goals of the Russian invasion was the independence of these quasi-formations of the so-called LPR and DPR, and with that he is trying to get the dictator's mercy for himself through his inefficient service. He supports this fake claim about Poland's alleged intentions to annex Ukrainian territory. This information is fiction. 
it aims to misinform both residents of the Russian Federation and some Polish citizens who tend to believe in conspiracy theories. Meanwhile, Russian propagandists continue to spin their red flag movies. Note that this is not the first time that they have used the red flag to indicate the occupation of certain territories. They have renounced Russian flags, thus trying to distance themselves from aggressive actions and atrocities in the occupied territories and put these red flags. We reported that red flags are hung in parts of Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. Now the story of the propagandists about Melitopol, where the red flag was raised over the denazified city, of course, in quotation marks. Why the red flag? Not only to stay away from atrocities, but also to play this story on the Victory Day, which Russia is going to celebrate on May the 9th, and through the red flag justifying their violent actions against Ukrainians. They say it is a logical continuation of the events of World War II, the extremely cynical lies of the Russian propagandists with the red flag also find their continuation in the statements of Foreign Minister Aggressor Lavrov, who has already gone so far as to say that the fact that President Zelensky has Jewish roots can in no way be an argument because Hitler too was of Jewish origin. Lavrov's dissemination of absolutely anti-Semitic and hateful statements comes as no surprise to anyone. But the cynicism of such actions before Victory Day, which they themselves are going to celebrate, proves once again that it is Russia that has the most consistent admirers of Goebbels. And lastly, there is one more message for today. With the help of available propaganda resources in the occupied territories, Russians are trying to implement a scenario of declaration of pseudo-formations, where they were able to take away our lands. In particular, the Kremlin is considering a scenario for the organization of the so-called quasi-state of Southern Rus in the Ukrainian territories occupied by the Russian army. Journalists from Radio Free Europe Ukrainian Service Investigate Program schemes have access to a plan for the creation of this quasi-state. This document is called the Manifesto of the Southern Russian People's Council. It is supposed to take power and establish a new state of Southern Rus. This is a typical technique of the Russian aggressors, which they already ran through in 2014, announcing the so-called Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republics. It fully fits into the scenario that was published in Komsomolskaya Pravda back in early March, right after this war began. We talked about it two months ago. One scenario is to tear Ukraine into several states, but they will not succeed. Ukraine will hold out and reclaim the territories that the aggressor has seized. And Russia will suffer inevitable punishment. Once again, I urge you to trust only verified sources of information, to engage critical thinking and to seek out the primary source who is talking about it, not some activist or neighbor or commandant's office or territorial defense or the so-called Donetsk People's Republic or a respectable interlocutor. Do not trust propagandists. Believe in the Ukrainian armed forces, the Ukrainian national media, Ukrainian TV marathon and the Ukrainian political leadership. See you soon.